and welcome to the Daily Devotion here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Goodroad. Our reading today comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 21. This is the Old Testament reading for Holy Cross Day. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today I want to bring your attention to something specific in this reading today. Here, in verse 5 of chapter 21, the people speak against God and Moses, and they say, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. They actually lie. They lie to Moses. They lie to God. They say that there is no food and no water. It's not true. God does provide them food. It's just that they loathe it. They call it worthless. They don't want the manna that God has provided for them all throughout their journey in the wilderness. They want something better. They want something more substantial. They want something that tastes better, maybe. In other words, they're not grateful for the food that God has provided for them. They're jealous for more. And the same thing is true about the water as well. God does provide them water. It's just maybe not as much as they want or not where they want or as abundant as they want. The people think that they can tell God what it is that they want and God will just give it to them. They are jealous for something more. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about jealousy and greed. It is very important for us as Christians to look at what God has placed into our life and be grateful for it. Not be jealous for what God has given to somebody else and not be greedy for something that God has not deemed fit to give to you, at least not at this time. Rather, it is very important to us to always stay content and happy with the things that God has given to us. Because just as soon as we stop feeling grateful for all the things that God has given to us, well then we start thinking that God really doesn't love us. He start thinking God loves somebody else more than he really loves me, and that leads us down a very bad path, a path of unfaithfulness, a path just like these Israelites, where we start grumbling against the Lord. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong, either. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to desire better for yourself or better for your family. It's a good thing if you want to keep on working hard to work your way up in your job or make more money or afford nicer things for your wife or for your kids or for yourself. That's fine. But I think that there is a very distinct difference between wanting to do well at the things that God has placed before you so that way you can continue to improve your lot in life and being jealous and making those things an idol. I think what that stems from is really the, uh, the desire behind all of it. Is it that you're just jealous and you want better stuff so that way you can just live an easier life? Or is it that you want to improve all the things that God has given to you? I think that the second thing is definitely the best uh, frame of mind to have. We should always be looking to improve the things that God has given to us, improve the jobs that he's given to us, improve the houses that he has given to us, improve the relationships that God has given to us with our wife or with our parents or with our kids or with our brothers or sisters. Looking to improve the things that God has given to you is good. But making an idol out of them, loving them so much that you would grumble against God that he has not taken care of 
this specific want or this specific want. Well, that's where it is sinful. That's where we would be like the people of Israel who grumbled against God. Now, I also want you to know that if you have done this, I'm sure that almost everybody has, I know I've done this before, been jealous for things that God has given to me, hasn't given to me before. I've been jealous for things that I really, really want but don't necessarily need. What do you do when that happens? Well, you certainly don't wait for God to send a fiery serpent into your life to bite you. Rather, recognize it as soon as possible and repent. Go to God and ask for forgiveness for that sin, and God promises that he will give it to you because there is forgiveness for all sins found only in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died on the cross to forgive all of our sins, even the ones where we're jealous for things that God hasn't given to us. It's very important for us as Christians to recognize that is the greatest gift that God has given to us. That's the best blessing that God could ever bless us with. His Son, Jesus Christ, and His forgiveness of sins. In Jesus' name, Amen.